Just moments away from the first pitch. Let's look at the Baylor starting lineup presented by Capital One. Here's Glenn Moore. I'm sure he's glad that that first game today is over. Emily Hott is leading it off again. Pylon, Govan, Binford is going to be at third to start this game. Anna Watson, Koyazos behind the plate. Shannon Vavoda is going to make her first start of the regional. West and Strain. And another start for Chloe Riaceto. She was the winning pitcher in the game earlier. Three innings, no runs, two hits, struck out one. Didn't walk anybody. Yeah, and Riaceto, I mean, just has been leading in the circle and doing such an incredible job the last couple of days. And that heavy curve that she's got side to side, she keeps great movement, spins it through the zone, great location on it. And it's really tripped up these Bear hitters this last game. She almost shut out the Bears back in February. Has a win here in the regional, so proven track record of success against Baylor. And now Louisiana, as they're used to on this field, the home team on the scoreboard. So Baylor will bat first. There's Emily Hot. Out of this regional, one for seven, but that one hit was a big one. It was a home run against Ole Miss on Friday. She's got nine of those on the year. Beautiful day here in Lafayette. Let's crown a champion in the region and get on to the Supers. Who's going to do it? So you have 35 minutes, not a lot of time between games. What's the most important thing, Natasha? Just reset, short-term memory. Next game, we have a new opportunity. If you're Baylor, if you're the Cajuns, keep it coming. You know, just if it's not broke, don't fix it. They were, they figured it out at the plate, so they got to keep applying the pressure offensively. Fifth year senior from Edmond, Oklahoma, hits it high and deep, and that is in the bleachers. Goodbye home run. For the second time in three days, Emily Hot leads off a game with a home run. And talk about short-term memory. Emily Hot, let's go. Lead off home run. I mean, if this doesn't pump you up, I don't know what does. New game, new life. Let's go. <laughs> that one landed out there like a meteorite. No one wanted to catch that one. Emily Hot, her 10th home run of the year. Here's Pylon. So Baylor had three hits in the first game. Two of them were from Govan. Where was the offense going to come from in game two against Louisiana today? Well, it's quickly answered by the first hitter of the game. And you just saw Pylon show bunt. And yesterday, that was a big part of Baylor's game. I mean, throughout their offense in the first game, they weren't even doing any short game. They completely exposed the left side and the right side. They noticed that first base will stay back on bunts, and so they were trying to absorb on that short game. Line drive, base knock for Pylon. That is her second hit of the regional. And this curve, that curves away from Pylon. I mean, just a beautiful piece of hitting. Just stay short, those left side. This is what you want if you're the Bears. You know, we saw this from Baylor in the first game today. Yeah, the first couple of innings, they were squaring the ball up. It's just, they were finding gloves. Now, they're squaring up Riaceto to start the game, and they're being rewarded for it. Now Govan comes up with a runner on. 
Govan hits it high, but not very deep. Coming over from center is Maya Davis to make the catch. First out here in the first. So that hasn't happened very often that Govan goes quietly. Leah Binford comes up, one on one out. Binford one for eight in the regional. She bunts, and it's a good one. And it's going to be foul, barely. But if you take a look at this, you can notice when Binford puts his bunt down, that first base stays back. And Baylor has been completely aware of that and trying to take advantage, but really smart play by Rio Soto. Take a look at Roe here. She just stays back. Even when Binford squares, she doesn't even crash to go get the bunt. Leah Binford. One hit was a grand slam. And she tags this one to center right at Davis, though. Another ball really hit on the screws, but it's the second out. I mean, you can already feel the feeling. It's completely different. They are squaring up on balls. And the advantage that they have is, I mean, they just saw her a couple of hours ago. And so Riosetto is going to have to make some adjustments. She's going to have to try to use some off speed or even just changing eye levels. If she can go more up in the zone, she keeps the ball down a lot side to side. So you can kind of get a little bit comfortable of kind of getting a feel for her break on that curve. Watson was 0 for 2 in the game earlier today. Lined out to third and popped out to third. Squares this one up, but there's Vasquez. Standing on the step stool and making the catch for the third out. Some well hit balls by Baylor, none better than Emily Hott to start the game. And it's 1-0 Bears in this winner take all region final. Sixteenth straight regional final for Louisiana. Sixth under head coach Jerry Glasgow. Here's his lineup presented by Capital One. Maya Davis has been a consistently good leadoff hitter all year. Laney Crater getting hot at the right time. Sam Rowe, Victoria Valdez, Lang Lears, Ellistad, who had a grand slam in the game earlier today. Vasquez, Falterman, and Hayden. The exact same lineup as it was just a couple of hours ago. Riley Crandall, sophomore right-hander. Get the start as she did against Louisiana yesterday. It was an 8-0 victory for her and the team, her 15th of the year. Pitched a little bit earlier today in relief, hoping to get out to a good start today. Yeah, yesterday, I mean, she was just lights out. You know, when we saw her in that in the game earlier today, she kind of was a little bit flat, but she's got good movement. She throws to all quadrants. She has a rise, a screw. She can go side to side. She can go up and down. And what also she has is a great off speed. No runs and two hits in five innings in the win over Louisiana yesterday. There's a strike in the outside corner. One and one. Maya Davis, the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year out of Lovelady, Texas. Hitting 419. Oh, one and two to the leadoff hitter. And this is Crandall's screw, and she established this early in the game yesterday, and it's going to be a key pitch for her today as well. That's booted by West. And now you've got the speed of Davis at first base. 
And that's what Davis does to you. I mean, just keeps on applying the pressure. I mean, this is a routine play right here, and Wes knows it, but she also knows the speed of the runner and gets a little tripped up. It speeds you up when you know that the runner's quick like Davis. Boy, Lenny Crater was good earlier this afternoon. Crater three for three, three runs batted in. She has five hits in the last two Louisiana games. Keep an eye on Davis. Davis was off with the pitch. She has two stolen bases in the tournament. That's the third error for Baylor today. And remember, they only played a five-inning game the first game, so a lot of errors starting to pile up on Baylor here on Championship Sunday. Yeah, taking care of the ball is going to be important. And, you know, a couple days ago, they were playing some solid defense behind Binford, Crandall yesterday. Crater is going to make Crandall earn it. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. There's that dance that's starting to become all too familiar. In front of the Baylor dugout again, that's her fourth hit of the day. Crater, this 3-1 count, I mean, just her moving up into this two spot has changed the game for the Cajuns, just going so deep in her at bats. Quality at bats every single time, and you cannot forget the shimmy. <laughs> I love it. First hit for Louisiana. Wanted foul by Sam Rowe. Interesting tactic here. You've got the power of Rowe. But Jerry Glasgow calls for the bunt here from Sam. Hitting 326, nine homers, 39 runs batted in. Put in, ball and a strike. Sam all Sunbelt. One for three in the first game with a run batted in. She has four hits in the regional. Riley Crandall starting to pace around the rubber a little bit, trying to reset. Two balls, one strike. Two and one. Okay. Off the plate. Home plate umpire for this game is Jim Bertuzzi. That's the other thing, you know. The umpire's strike zone from the game earlier is totally different now, so you got to adjust to that as well. Walked her. Base is full of Cajuns. And the cleanup hitter, Victoria Valdez, strides to the plate with a chance to really make an impact on this game. Down one nothing. And Valdez has been on base a ton this weekend. Valdez one for two in the first game today, but was hit by two pitches. Strike. Now just a tick below 300. The 0-1.
Line drive, foul. <laughs> Valdez, as we've illustrated so many times, just crowds the plate, hangs right over it, and dares you to come inside. Absolutely, I mean, she'll turn into it. Not afraid to get hit. Did she go? No. Mike Thibodeau is down there at first now. Take a look at her hands and looks like she can, she doesn't break her wrist and keeps that bat barrel back. One and two. Outfield straight away. Bases loaded. Fly ball. Second base. West makes a nice catch. Turns, throws. It's going to be late. Maya Davis was tagging all the way and tied the ball game with her speed. It's one apiece. And productive out for the Cajuns, just knowing the speed that you have, you just got to get it to the green. But if you're Baylor on this, definitely the, pl the player who has the better view is Watson. And West makes that catch, her back is to the field. And if Watson makes that catch, she probably can get a better throw off. But again, that Davis speed, it's stellar. 36th run batted in for Valdez on that sacrifice fly. So the error comes in to score. That'll be an unearned run against Crandall. This is Alexa Lang Lears now having a really good region. One for three with a couple of runs batted in earlier today. She's got three hits in the tournament. Had a couple of runs batted in Friday against Princeton. All Sunbelt for the third straight year. One and two. Here's Brooke Ellistad hit that grand slam for her ninth home run of the season in the first game against Baylor. Part of that 10 run fourth inning. She's on deck. Oh, that hit her. Base is loaded again, and Ellistad has another chance at a grand slam. This is earlier today. And just a beautiful piece of hitting. I mean, she goes oppo with this ball. And I mean, that moment just suffocated the Bears and Cajuns were rolling. And there's the pitching coach. Brittany Sneed. He does a lot with the pitching staff. He just works well with them to just collaborate with them and calms them down. Ellistad, six runs batted in. In game one. Pitching hasn't been an issue up until today for Baylor. In the first two games, Binford, complete game win. Second game, Crandall, a complete game win. And today it's just, it's been a real challenge to get outs. Fly ball, left field. Coming over is hot, makes the catch. Tagging Crater, and she'll score. Louisiana leads two to one. Seven runs batted in for Ellistad today. Another 
set of first inning runs for Louisiana. We talked about it a few times. 23% of their scoring has come in the first inning. That's 80 runs this year in the first inning now. And that's their forte is score first, score often. Cecilia Vasquez. Over four in the first game. Puts it in play, backhanded by Crandall. And that'll do it. But Louisiana gets two, and they now lead in this winner take all region final. We're back here in Louisiana, where the Ragin' Cajuns are now in front. Good first inning for both teams as Emily Hot leads off the game for Baylor with a home run. Cajun Sansa right back with two in the bottom of the first. Winner is on to the Super Regional. Cajuns made it last year. It's been a little bit for Baylor. They haven't been to the Super since 2017. In fact, this is their first region final since 2018. And now they're playing from behind again. And Sydney Coyasos leads it off. Getting a start behind the plate here in this game. Also has played quite a bit at third. So now, the ball is in Baylor's court, Natasha. We'll see how they respond. Yeah, and it's punch for punch, and this is what you want in your championship game. Both teams want to extend their seasons. High fly ball, and yes, it is gone. Home run. Sydney Coyasos ties it up. There's your response. Her third home run of the year. And you gotta love to see this. You just gotta love the response from the Bears, just immediately answering back. Koyasa's just taking this ball deep and just pumping your team up. I mean, everybody just wanting to extend their season a little bit longer. Jerry Glasgow has decided to make a change here. So Rhea Seto's gonna come out. That doesn't mean we've seen the end of her. Sam Landry comes in. Landry in the first game today pitched two shutout innings, allowed just one hit against Baylor. And Sam Landry is a veteran. A ton of wins on the season. 24 and 9, good ERA. Yeah, she's their senior leader in the circle, and she's got that rise, screw, curve. She's got that elite change. She moves the ball around, changes eye levels, changes speeds. So I think a good decision to make the switch, just change it up. Now, she took the loss against Baylor yesterday. Gave up six runs in three and two thirds, but only one of those runs was earned as the Cajuns defense behind her in that eight nothing game wasn't terrific. So she comes in as the game is even to a piece now. Base is empty top of the second. Basically a fresh start for everybody. Louisiana seeing this player for the first time, Shannon Vavoda at the plate, first plate appearance of the regional. We saw her in the field at third base in game one today. Vavoda, junior, hitting 278, a couple of home runs, 13 runs batted in. She is the designated player. Ground ball, gobbled up by Lang Lears, first out. Okay. 
Sam Landry named first team all region this week. Six complete game shutouts. And played a role in nine of the 10 shutouts this season coming into the national tournament. I mean, she has been really exceptional in her junior year. And she's been pretty much the heartbeat for the Cajuns in the circle all season long, like you mentioned. And she just really energizes this team and gets them going. And is a leader as a senior. Gets ahead of Casey West. Just pops it back. West of the first game was 0 for 1 at the plate. Average now 174. Just missed. Take a, pit, take a look at this location of this pitch. It's up and out. It's a little high. She wanted that pitch. Casey West had an RBI yesterday against the Cajuns. Also pitches from time to time. 2-2 two -two pitch. Hits it high, but not very deep. It's caught. Let's check in on the Gainesville Regional. That's the top of the third now. Florida is leading South Alabama six to nothing. And the winner of that regional will play the winner of this one in the Super Regional round. And if it's Florida, it would be in Gainesville. This is Taylor Strain with two outs. The number nine hitter for Baylor. Strain's contributions this weekend have been mostly defensively. She has played an exceptional center field, and especially in that game against Ole Miss where she robbed Paige Smith of a home run, which could have changed the game at that time in Ole Miss's favor. It did not. Trying to be a spark plug at the bottom of the order. One run in this inning on a home run by Koyasos. Swung out and missed. And Landry comes in in relief after the home run and gets the Voda West in strain. But Collazos evens this game at two. Here's Falterman to lead it off for Louisiana. Trying to poke it down the right field line. Hugging the line was hot and she makes the catch. That's a good scouting report right there, knowing what Fulterman is going to try to do, and they had hot position right where she needed to be. Yeah, if you take a look where hot started, I mean, she didn't have very far to go because she was in the right positioning. Know that Fulterman will flare and inside out, and it's a big first out. Now the nine-hole hitter, Hayden. Bottom of the second, tied at two. Winner is on to the Super Regionals. Maddie Hayden was one for two in the first game. Scored a couple of times. Trying to bunt her way on, it's gonna roll foul. When we were talking to Louisiana this week about places to eat, that was the place they recommended. Old time grocery. It was fantastic. Highly recommend. Jerry Glasgow knows about softball, he knows about pitching, he knows about food. <laughs> yes. Everything Cajun. Nothing in two to Hayden. Base is empty. Crandall got a piece of it. Now Pylon won't have a place. He's got to eat it. Hayden 
out of the nine hole has been really productive since they dropped her down. I think just a smart decision just to kind of give her more looks at the bottom of the lineup to turn that lineup over. And, you know, again, we talked about Crater in that two hole, but Hayden's been doing some good stuff down in the bottom. That's her second hit today. Here comes Maya Davis again. Binford, <laughs> you know, reacting to the crowd because the crowd said, oh, we think that was fair. And Binford's like, are you kidding me? Settle down. Just stop that. Just stop that. <laughs> her reaction. Awesome. Check out her reaction. <laughs> Into right field. Maya Davis, her third hit of the day, and the second time she's been on base in this one. I mean, Davis, she just stays hot. Oh, she's so dynamic. She can hit for power. She slaps. She bunts. How do you keep her off? Yeah, well, that sets it up for the best hitter right now in this lineup, Laney Crater. Nobody hotter for the Raging Cajuns. She had two hits against Princeton on Friday. Or excuse me, last night, I should say. Earlier today, three hits. She's got one in this game. about Crater is her actual takes. I mean, she doesn't have a lot of movement. You know, some hitters, you can see them antsy and, you know, aggressive and trying to reach, but she's so solid and so simple with her takes. Ground ball deep, short. Pylon to third for the force out. And she is quick. Flipped those hips, got it to Binford, and there are two down. Pylon's transition is just sick. I mean, she gets rid of this ball so quick. Her angle, perfection. Throws that to the outside part of the bag and makes it look easy. Sam Rowe will try to go with two outs here. Riley Crandall. Ming in two thirds, two runs, three hits. One walk, hasn't struck out anybody yet. One, two, three. Row a walk and she was stranded in the first inning. Junior from Destin, Florida, waits the pitch. And that's going to be foul. So Maya Davis with her 90th hit this season. Only the second player in Louisiana history to do it. Danielle Gomez did it in 2006 with 92 on the season. There's a chance that Davis could tie that record and maybe go over it before the end of the day. This is lofted to right field. Watson is there, and that's going to end the inning. So the Cajuns threaten but do not score. It stays 2-2 going to the third. Emily Hott led off the game with her 10th home run of the year. First inning, Baylor trying to bounce back from a thrashing 13-0 earlier at the hands of Louisiana. This is how Baylor started the game. Just sending a message from the get-go. I mean, you could just feel the energy, a new game, a new opportunity. And Hot did that, just sending the message. Second time around. But now they are facing Sam Landry because she came in in relief after the Coyasso's home run and got the Voda Weston screen in order. So Landry, her first 
inning that starts at the top, but she rides it in here and hits hot. Take a look at this pitch. It rides it in on hot. It just hits the arm guard. Presley Pylon has one of the three hits for Baylor. The only one that's not a home run. Looking to advance the runner. Pylon two hits in the regional. Good bunt, that'll get it done. Hot to second. One out, and here comes Govan, who's been amazing all season. Now Stad just doing a good job of staying in control. Defense was not working for the Cajuns yesterday, and so taking care of the ball today. Govan, a rare quiet at bat her first time up, a soft fly ball to center field, and now Jerry Glasgow wants to come out and have a chat with Landry before she deals to this terrific hitter. Go Van now, her batting average coming into this plate appearance, 458. She's got 10 home runs on the season, 47 walks. Because nobody wants to pitch to her. Yeah, that on base percentage. I mean, she is hot and uh, Definitely the conversation is, do we throw to her? Do we walk yeah. her? And, well, let me ask you, what would and, you do? And I was going to answer the question. I'm, I'm thinking you walk her. You walk her and challenge the hitters around her. I mean, she has proven that she can get it done at the plate. Binford's up next. Looks like they're going to attack her. How about that? Andrew <laughs> comes with a belt high fastball. I'm here for it. I like the challenge. Jalen Govan, top hitter in the Big 12. In on the hands, popped up to row. Two down. The Cajun fans appreciate that. Yeah, and I like this plan by Landry. I mean, she just does come into her hands and is in tight, doesn't let her get extension on this. I mean, perfect placement on this pitch. And if you're going to throw at her, you know, challenge her with that stuff in on her hands. It's hard to get extend extended on that ball. First time in the entire regional that Govan has been retired in consecutive at bats. So here's Binford now. Lined out to center, hit it really hard, but right at Davis in center field her first time up. Besides hitting Emily Hot to start the inning, uh, Landry has been really good since coming out in relief last inning. Down the line, just foul. Binford making a bid for extra bases. Boy, Aaliyah Binford, she's been so good. Winning pitcher against Ole Miss. Grand slam against Louisiana. Runner in scoring position here. Put in play to third. Ellister ends the inning. Another good one for Sam Landry. We played two and a half. Tied at two here in Lafayette. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. Seventh and deciding game in this Lafayette Regional. And this is the rubber match between Baylor and Louisiana. Each team run ruling the other so far. And this game has a decidedly different flavor. 2-2 two -two as we head bottom of the third inning. We've seen a couple of home runs for Baylor. One for Hot, one for Coyasos. Louisiana had two runs right away in the bottom of the first inning. 
But now it seems like Riley Crandall has found a little bit of a groove here, Natasha. It'll be interesting to see what happens here in the third. Yeah, she's coming into her own, starting to use her defense a little bit more. Last inning pylon making that great play to end the potential threat. Victoria Valdez sack fly in the first inning. Six runs batted in now for Valdez. Two O is whacked to center, backing off his strain, and she'll keep this one in the ballpark. On the warning track, Taylor Strain goes back to get it. Long out for Valdez, one away. A good piece of hitting. I mean, again, you talk about you want to be a hard out. I mean, this is in the center of the field. She hits it hard. Just didn't have enough on it to get out of here, but solid AB. Big cut from Langleers. Alexa was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Both of Louisiana's runs in the first came via the sack fly. The one for Valdez and the one for Elliston. to the count. Alexa Lang Lears who started at shortstop the last two years for Louisiana and has been at second this season. He's done a wonderful job teaming up on the double play combination with Vasquez. One two as Crandall rocks and comes home. Going to foul it back out of play. Texas, the number one national seed in Texas A&M are on to the Supers. They're going to face each other. Two longtime foes and future enemies in the SEC as soon as next year. That will be played in Austin. Just off the plate to Lang Lears. This pitch is such a good location. Crandall has been coming in on Langler's hands with her screw and going up and in. And then to get that outside corner, she really wanted that one. Wrapped hard into left field. Binford tried to spear it on the way past, but all she heard was a whooshing sound. Langlers, I mean, just ropes this ball. This ball is elevated. It's on the heart of the plate and just tattoos it. But I always love Baylor's strategy. They always take notice of their outfielders. Anytime there's a runner rounding first, they'll always try to throw to the bag and try to catch a runner sleeping. That's the fourth hit for Louisiana. And Ellistek cranks one into the outfield that lands for a hit. She stays hot. Ellistat just so hot today. I mean, just roping this ball. This ball is on the inner half, and she just gets her bat head out. Two on, one out. Sissy Vasquez coming up now. Rips it down the line, that's a fair ball. Glasgow sending the runner. Lang Lears will score.
RBI base knock for Cecilia Vasquez out of the seven hole, and it's 3-2, Louisiana. And those are back-to-back -back first pitch singles. Vasquez just roping this, and you can see Benford just kind of pull up, thinking that that was going to be foul. But the Cajuns get that go-ahead run. Falterman swings at the first pitch. So you can see a common thread this inning. The Cajuns making some adjustments, being aggressive on the first pitch. And now Glenn Moore calls time. something to the attention of the home plate umpire. What do you think this is about? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I'm wondering if it's about. Pitchers? Uh, Tell he wasn't happy. No matter what happy. it was about. <laughs> But he's had his piece. Whether he's going to get his way or not, I, I don't know. Brought something to the attention of Jim Bertuzzi. One strike on Falterman. Two strikes. Now they've got the runner way off base. Everybody diving back. Vasquez gets back into first. Ellistad out at second. It's almost like they were daring Collazos to make a mistake. One out. Falterman flew out in foul ground to the left fielder last time. Binford nabs it and steps on the bank for the force out. Two down. And Hayden, the number nine hitter, will come back up. Just take a look at Binford, just knowing where she is on the field and taking that herself. Soft liner and it's foul. I think the first question we're going to have to ask Glenn more when uh, we get a chance to talk to him next half inning is just what he was trying to convey to Jim Bertuzzi. Absolutely. He was not happy. <laughs> Hayden one for one. The 0 1 pitch. What a catch by Binford! laying out to keep that one from going into left field. So Louisiana will have to settle for one. But they've got the lead now. As Baylor gets ready to hit here in the fourth, let's bring in Glenn Moore. Coach, just uh, not a lot of time to wipe the slate clean in between games. You have to have a short memory on a day like like today. Uh, you know, what did you say between games to get your team back on track? Yes, uh, I mean, you've got great leadership, so they understand. It didn't matter if it was 1-0 uh, loss or a 13-0 loss. It's still a loss, and we're going to get a chance at them again. So, you know, that's why you want to be in the winner's bracket going into this day, and hopefully you'll be a little more fresh. But they look like they got plenty of stuff left in their tank. You both have seen each other. You've seen Landry, you've seen Riosetto, and they have also seen Benford and they've seen Crandall. What right. are you seeing from Crandall today? Well, first of all, I think the offense is indicative of having seen each other enough to where it's hard to fool hitters, and uh, they're, they're barreling, up, barreling up a lot of balls. Uh, you know, Crandall's trying to work ahead in the count, and uh, fatigue setting in a little bit with these pitchers. I think that's another reason. Um, you know, she's just got to keep battling and um, we're making some pretty good defensive plays behind her, keep it close and give us uh, give ourselves a chance. All right, Glenn, thank you so much All for right, your time. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, 
just a reminder, if you want to keep track of the entire tournament in one serving, the seven inning live show on the ESPN app. You can see every game, every big moment. And they just showed Oklahoma advancing. 14th straight Super Regional for the Oklahoma Sooners, the three-time defending champs. This is a line drive up the bat of Anna Watson. Oh, what a catch and foul ground by Falterman. Mercy. Raging Cajun fans. Very appreciative of that effort. That's stealing a base hit, probably an extra base hit away from Watson. Yeah, this ball hits the ground. That easily could be two bases, and that is a awesome catch. Watson's just like, man, give me a break. Now Coyazos, who homered to start the second inning. By the way, we don't want to put Glenn Moore on the spot asking him about questions that he had to the umpire, so we didn't do that on camera. Fly ball to left, that's going to get down. Second hit for Coyazos, one out base runner for the Bears. Um, but we, we can convey this. It's about the batter's box. And he's just saying, hey, you know, just keep an eye on the batter's box, you know, just to make sure that people are both feet in, staying in the batter's box. More specifically, slap hitters. And when they're running through the box, he just wants to know who has an eye on that because he's seeing something a little bit different. Such a class act. Both of these coaches, all four coaches this week have been yeah. terrific for us. Yeah. Just a lot of inspiring coaches, and you know, when we talk to them, every single one of them, I've wanted to play for them, and you know, just how they talk about their teams and keep them motivated. Shannon Voboda grounded out to second. She's 0 for 1, getting her first start of the regional. Another left handed hitter. Baylor down a run here in the fourth. Winner on to the Supers. High heat from Landry. Two down. Just great sequence from Landry. She just goes with that rise ball up in the zone and gets Vivoda to chase, and she just keeps scaling up the ladder. Landry gets the sign and gets ready to deal to Casey West. Starts here with a strike. West to fly out in the second inning. She was 0 for 1 in game one today against Louisiana. Pops it up on the infield. Vasquez makes the catch. Coyazos is stranded. Three and a half in the books. We're going to talk to the head Cajun next, Jerry Glasgow. Play Matvik, Natasha Watley back here in Louisiana. And Jerry Glasgow in his seventh year as head coach of the Rachel Cajuns back on headset with us. Jerry, this has been a treat this weekend, I'm telling you. It's quite a show here to come watch uh, softball in your town. Yeah, you know, we got a great fan base here and they love college softball. It, it's a great atmosphere and you're getting to watch it sitting beside the greatest shortstop that ever played the game of fast pitch. And, you know, uh, I just have nothing but admiration for Tosh and what she's done for our sport. And, uh, you know, she also hit 406 and, and helped me get me a ring. You know, Kat Osterman, <laughs> Kelly Kretzman, Caitlin Lowe. I couldn't mess it up. I just had to hang on to the shirt tail. So, oh, uh, great thrill and a great honor to get to see her again this weekend. Uh, thanks, Coach. Well, I'll pay you later. Thank you very much. But, well, congrats to you on your 300th win, your last win. That's yeah. awesome. And just yeah. to get this. I didn't this even know it. I had no idea. <laughs> well, I'll, Somebody I'll, come in the office and I said, well, I don't give I, I don't care. I want, I want one more is what I want. I'll let you. So. I'll let you know that you got the 300th win, but how do you got to get through uh, today? How do you got to get it done? We, we, we've got to play good fundamental softball. Keep attacking the zone. Don't be don't be timid around the zone and pound it in the zone and then challenge them. And if they, if they hit the ball and they, and they end up getting the hits they need, you tip your hat to them. But we got to attack. All right, Jerry. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> Look at that glove tower behind Jerry. And even if he had seen that, he wouldn't have been distracted. When he gets on it, when he gets on a roll, you can't stop. <laughs> He's a beauty. Yeah, he's, he's an great. absolute beauty. He's great. Three-time Sunbelt Conference Coach of the Year, your former head coach. You know, and, and uh, an extremely happy man. Um, and it's not like he hasn't dealt with hard times and tragedy in his life. He and his wife certainly have had that. As you know, you know his, his late daughter, Jerry Ann, former All-American at Oregon, was a, a volunteer assistant with the Raging Cajuns a few years back and then she was involved in a deadly car crash and he has he has become a stronger man because of that as Davis rolls out to second west with the throw to first one down here in the Louisiana fourth I, I'm always impressed by people who can handle tragedy and turn it into something positive and, and that's what he has done with with the passing of his daughter and and she was such a great softball person too he, all of his girls were involved in softball absolutely i mean what do you think about the glasgow family i mean just their presence in this game is they are a softball family his other daughter tara she's a another head coach and just you know talking about jerry ann and when he coached us on the pride that summer jerry ann was around and he would throw her bp in between practice, or coaching us and we got to know her and just an incredible family and just his positivity in this game and his impact is huge on this game. How about Riley Crandall getting a couple of ground outs from the two best hitters right now in this Louisiana lineup, Davis and Crater. Quickly two down in the fourth. Here comes Sam Rowe who's over one with a walk. Yeah, Tara's the head coach at Eastern Illinois. Just a terrific family. And it was so important to him that Louisiana host a regional this year. And he scheduled it so that if things broke Louisiana's way, that would almost be a certainty. I mean, he really scheduled tough 15 Power 5 games, 13 before March the 4th. Because he knew once Sunbelt Conference play started, there wouldn't be many opportunities to get high RPI wins. So he front-loaded that schedule, and they won a bunch of them. Yeah, and super smart. I mean, he just wanted the opportunity to host, and you can just feel the environment here. It's almost like they are part of another player on the team. They just have such a present here, the fan base. And so very important for him to get that hosting regional here in Lafayette. Three to Louisiana. Fly ball to center. Hit well, backing off strain. And she has been a vacuum out there. Anything that she can track down, she does. That's a one, two, three inning for Riley Crandall. We have played four. It's a one run game in Lafayette. For 41 years, softball's best have battled it out. Who will be crowned this year? Will someone from the field step up, or will Oklahoma's dominance continue? Only time will tell, but you're invited to sit back and watch the ride, because for two weeks in June, everyone's a softball fan. On the road to Oklahoma City, and look at all the tickets punched already, and some very familiar names, Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, LSU back to the Super Regionals after getting upset last year by Louisiana. Taylor Strain dumps one into short left field for a leadoff hit for Baylor here in the fifth as the Bears are down a run. Taylor Strain just taking her first pitch, being aggressive. Middle end keeps her hands inside, and Baylor's got a base runner. Just the second hit allowed by Sam Landry in three innings. Back to the top, and Emily Hot. Hot has been on with a hit by pitch. And of course, homered her first time up. <laughs> Trying 
crowd reacting to every pitch. 2-0 from Landry. Foul back. Runner was off. Strain on the move. She's got seven stolen bases on the year. A little hit and run going here. For the Baylor Bears. the glove of Rowe, and she's not going to have a play. And this is just wrote by Hot. Rowe just has a tough, tough time just trying to put a glove on it. Two runners on for Baylor. That's the second error on Rowe this weekend. Oh, they're going to give her a hit. Mm -hmm. Going to give Emily Hot a hit there. So first and second, nobody out. And there you see Rhea Seto getting postured again to potentially enter this game. I mean, that was smoked, but. It's also a ball that Rowe would probably tell you she needs to needs to make that play. Yeah, at least if she could keep it in front of her and move her feet, took her a little to her side, the ball took her to the side. But just try to move your body, put a body in front of it, try to knock it down, keep it in front, because if she does, she can get that out at one. Strain at second, hot at first. Both players can run well. And now Pylon at the plate. Tap, that's fair. Only one play, it's to first. So Pylon doing a great job moving the runners along. One out, and here comes Go Van. Pylon just doing a great job of just ensuring that she gets this ball down. Just doing her job. Second sack bunt for Pylon today. Every at bat she has had in this game has been good. A, a single in the first, and that's the two sacrifices. All right, look out. Here's Shailen Go Van. Should score a run. Davis, the throw to third. That skips off the glove of Ellistad. And Hot's going to get to third base. The run scores. Taylor Strain makes it three apiece. And now what's the argument? Yep, they're totally going to review this play. And I was looking at Strain at third, and her Did movement. She leave early? Her movement was a little bit early, so let's check the review. But she had a lot of time, so she didn't have to rush that. But it definitely was questionable. So she's tagging on this. If you take a look at Strain at third, but how deep this ball is, she's definitely going to have enough time to score. Now we're not going to have a. Angle, I don't think. That shows both. <laughs> She's trying to get her mic to work, and the crowd is <laughs> angry. <laughs> Set up a replay here that will show both the catch and screen the base runner in the same box. Here we go. So she's just moving early, but okay. So she's still on it. Just her movement was early, but she was straddling. I think she's okay there. And so. Coach Glasgow probably saw exactly what I saw. It's just her movement it was a little bit early, but on that replay, it looks like she was still in touch with the bag. So Baylor has tied it up for now. They're looking at it. Most likely this is going to be confirmed. the 
call. Test. The ruling on the field of the runner at third not leaving early is upheld. That is Louisiana's first challenge. And they'll have one remaining. So that is the fourth run batted in for Go Van in this regional. And it's three apiece. And an error on the throw from Davis at center allowing Hot to get to third. Really, I don't think the throw was the problem. I, I think Ellistad just kind of misplayed it, but they're going to give the error to Davis. This is Binford at the plate. Line drive, that's a base hit. And Baylor goes in front. A two-run fifth inning. Two out hitting by Aliyah Binford, getting it done for the Baylor Bears. Binford just sitting on this change. You can see she's off timing a little bit, but holds back, stays in her legs, keeps that bat barrel behind her, and just pokes at that ball, and Baylor's got the go-ahead. Anna Watson sprays it foul. Binford has had such an impact in this regional, whether it be in the field, as a pitcher, or at third base, or at the plate. All aspects, she has been fantastic. Binford back. She's got five runs batted in in the tournament now. So back and forth we go. Baylor now in front. A lot of game left. Off the glove of Lang Lears into center field. Binford's going to try for third. And she's going to get there. Runners at the corners and two outs. Anna Watson with a base hit. I mean, Binford, she is a straight baller. I mean, on this, she just sees it scoots away, and she is just booking it. No hesitation, and just goes for it. Runners on first and third for Baylor. Valdez goes out for a quick chat with Landry. Koyazus coming up next. As Baylor has scored twice here in the fifth. Koyazos a home run in the second inning, a single in the fourth. That home runner third of the year. Four-year veteran, headed to medical school next year. Trying to squeeze every ounce of softball that's left in her college career, and she wants to go out on top. Landry's 2-0. That's inside. 3-0, and, and Shannon Vavoda is yeah, scheduled that, to hit next. Yeah, that last pitch is, is pretty close, and they're all trying to figure out where's the zone at. There's a strike at the knees. <laughs> uh, crowd laying it on for Jim Bertuzzi. Walked her. Base is full of bears. Jerry Glasgow is going to interrupt here. Jim Bertuzzi walking toward it. And 
there's going to be a change. Maria Seto is going to come back into the circle. She started this game, lasted one inning, gave up two home runs. We step aside, Baylor four, Louisiana three, two outs in the fifth. Chloe Riaceto back in the game. She started, gave up a couple of runs, both runs scored on homers by Hot and Coyasos. And the first player she has to face as she re-enters is Sydney Coyasos. Big hat. Pardon me, this is uh, the Boda. But she switched on it, so her first at bat, she was on the left side. Yes, she did. And this time, she's on the right side. So switching it up because Rhea Seto's a lefty. Koyasos is at first after the walk to load the bases. Shannon Pavota is 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. The 0-2 pitch, got a piece of it, knocked the mask off of Jim Bertuzzi. in the inning for Baylor. They have retaken the lead. Binford at third. Watson at second. Coyasos at first. Popped up. The catcher, Valdez. Comes out, didn't even take her mask off. Made it look routine. So Baylor leaves them loaded, but they're playing from in front again. <laughs> Back here in Lafayette, Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns ready to hit again in the fifth inning. Valdez, Langlier, Zellestad, four, five, and six against Riley, Crandall, and Baylor. Baylor back on top after a two-run fifth inning. Valdez 0 for 1 with an RBI. Two strikes on the Louisiana catcher from Alvin, Texas. Riley Crandall started this game, still in there. Meanwhile, Louisiana's used Rhea Seto and Landry. Rhea Seto started the game, Landry came in, and now Rhea Seto back in. This is the start of the fifth inning of work for Crandall. Hold foul. Lexi Delbray is now warming up in the Raging Cajuns bullpen. We have not seen her today. It's upstairs, two and two. Do you think the coaching staffs of these teams knew back in February when they met here in Lafayette that you know they would be meeting again in the postseason because this is the sixth game these two have played here in 2024. Yeah, you have no idea as you're going through your season. You're just kind of going for that ride. You're certainly familiar with one another. Victoria Valdez awaits the payoff pitch from Riley Crandall. Just smoked. Glasgow had to do a little dance to get out of the way of that one. 
On deck, Langleers. West down on the turf, makes the catch. Just a great sequence from Crandall there. I mean, just busting her in, trying to have her foul off a ton of balls, making her speed up her swing, and then going with that off speed on the outside corner. I mean, she's just doing a great job of keeping these hitters off balance today. You know, Crandall is lucky. You know, if everything goes right, you know, if she can get through Valdez, Langleers, and Ellistad right here without any damage, get them one, two, three, there's a chance chance she might not have to see him again <laughs> Langleers has reached in seven of her last eight plate appearances pitch away from getting on again. Hit by a pitch in the first, a single and a run scored in the third. And Ellistad has done a lot of damage today. An RBI in this game had six in the first game. This is empty, one out, 3-1 pitch from Crandall. Full count. Ellistad and deck circle RBI sack fly back of the first a single in the third had a grand slam in the first game against Baylor this is down the line and caught hot again shading toward the line and left and Lang Lears is out for the first time today. Just a long at bat for both Valdez and Lang Lears. I mean, just making Crandall throw a lot of pitches and that's all you can ask for. Just be a hard out. Continue to see a lot of pitches. Be a hard out. Ellistad now 54 runs batted in. She has broke some windows today with her swing. Grand slam home run, six RBIs in the first game. Drove in a run in the first inning today. Trying to get something going here with two outs for the Cajuns. Govan sucks it up, steps on the bag. That's a one, two, three inning for Crandall. Remember that, that was a huge side for the pitcher. As we move on now to the sixth inning, the top of the sixth, we'll see Casey West lead it off for the Baylor Bears. Nope, this is going to be Walkendorf. He's going to pinch hit for West. Junior out of Texas. And skies it to Hayden in left field. So Wackendorf, with her first plate appearance of the game, is a quick out. 
Taylor Strain, one for two with a base hitter last time up in the fifth inning. Winner is on to the Super Regional round against the Florida Gators, who took care of South Alabama today. Again, Louisiana is back as the home team for this matchup. Earlier against Baylor, they were the visitors on the scoreboard, so they'll have last at bats. Each team down to uh, not very many outs left. Riasetto spins and fires out strain. <laughs> Oklahoma State has advanced. They're gonna host Arizona in the Stillwater Super Regional as Arizona took out Villanova. Arizona having a good season coming out of that regional and That'll be a nice matchup against Oklahoma State. Which will be future Big 12 matchups. That's right. Arizona had a good Big 12. Yeah, you really need a bingo card to keep up with all <laughs> yeah, of the realignment it's, again. And it's, it's a lot. It's going to take a while to get used to it. Just got used to the last shift. Right, right. <laughs> it's a lot. Emily Hot has been on base three times. A homer hit by pitch and a single. She has scored twice. Baylor would love some insurance late. Maria Seto's pitch is fouled off. You know, in these games, you know, between these two so far, it's been it's been a blowout. And now nip and tuck in this one where, you know, is one run gonna be enough? We, we would ever be able to ride it like this. I mean, just how it's gone. Hot strikes out, and it's a one-two-three inning for Chloe Riasetto. We played five and a half. Still a one-run lead for the Bears. Vasquez one for two with an RBI. As Riley Crandall starts the sixth inning, she has done a great job in the circle. One earned run allowed, six hits through the first five. Winner gets Florida in the Supers in Gainesville. This could find the green, and it does. Second hit for Vasquez, and Louisiana's got the leadoff hitter aboard. Vasquez just going down to get this ball. Stays in her legs. Just a little seeing eyeball. Vasquez two hits in this one. Third hit in the regional. Falterman has been good at slapping things the other way. Gets the bunt down. Binford low throw, scoop by West. Nice play by the second baseman covering the bag. But Falterman gets it done as Vasquez is now at second. And you can see when Falterman squares the bunt, Binford charges hard, but he just loses her grip a little bit on this, but great pickup by West at second base. Yeah, that's not easy for West. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, especially, you know, you would much rather a ball take you down as opposed to going up, because sometimes if you go up, it takes you off the bag. So a little bit easier to handle. Or rather second. And Coyasos, who's never afraid to show off that arm. This is Maddie Hayden. One for two with a single out of the nine spot, which is where she has hit today, and she has been very productive. She was one for two in the first game against Baylor today. Brown ball, and that's going to be a base hit. Here comes Vasquez to score. The throw. Got her. She is out. Taylor Strain with another great A play from center.
Jerry Glasgow wants a review, but I don't know. I think Strain threw her out. Yeah, I think Strain got her, and I mean, just such a great approach on this. You can see her approaching that ball, and just a great throw. And I think she gets her on that tag. Take a look right there. She's not even reaching the bag yet. I think she gets her. And there's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. Test, test. Louisiana is challenging the play, the ruling on the field that the runner was out at the plate. This play is under further review. Maddie Hayden with a beautiful base hit. Looked like she just tied the game. And you can see there's a bit of dejection on her face. Yeah. <laughs> because that was going to need to be a perfect throw, and it pretty much was. Yeah, and, you know, it could be questionable if the challenge will be about the catcher blocking her on the corner. But I don't know. I feel like she gives her a clear path. I think she's out. So they're taking a look in Pittsburgh. Call is out at home. And there's Maddie Hayden with her second base hit. And there was no doubt that Glasgow was sending Vasquez. Here comes the call. on the field of out at home is upheld. Yes. The runner's out. Taylor Strain. Two amazing standout plays in this regional, both taking a run away from the opponent. I mean, this throw was money. I mean, it was on, on target, on the spot. Aiden just devastated. Nothing you can do. I mean, she had a great hit up the middle and hit it hard. Two outs now for Davis. Maya Davis reached on an error in the first and scored, singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year. They still have a chance to tie it with Hayden at second base. And she runs well. Nothing in two. And Davis just hasn't liked that pitch all day long. And I feel like the umpire behind the plate has been pretty consistent with that pitch on the outer half. Soft ground ball. This is going to be tough. Pylon, not in time. Absolutely no chance for the Baylor D to get Davis out of that left-hand batter's box. Oh, yeah, with Maya Davis' speed, there's no way you're catching her on this. If you give her two hops, she's there. And Hayden goes to third. And now Laney Crater, who has carried this team at times today, coming up. She has reached in eight of her last 10 appearances at the plate. Strike one. Runners at the corners, two outs. Crater's been involved in some long, big at bats in this tournament. None bigger than this one right now, though. Inning over. Riley Crandall gives up three hits in the inning. No run score. And Taylor Strain getting high fives coming off the field.
They say the defense wins championships. Taylor Strain holding up her end of the bargain for the Baylor Bears. That was against Ole Miss, taking a run away from the Rebels' Paige Smith. This was yesterday against Louisiana. Basket catch on the run with her back to the infield, Willie Mays style. And just moments ago, taking another run away from the opponent. She has been next level. Oh. I mean, just on point in center field, covering ground, showing off the arm. She is keeping this Baylor team in this game. Well, Baylor in front. Pylon, the first out of the seventh. Baylor would love to get some insurance here. One run, will it be enough? Will it stand up, especially when you look at what Louisiana has coming up in the bottom of the inning? Roe, Valdez, and Lang Lears, three, four, and five. So Pylon is out. Here comes Govan. Govan has been quiet by her standards at the plate today. Three flyouts. Now, one did drive in a run. That was in the fifth inning. We haven't really seen her get one in her wheelhouse yet today. And that was one of the keys for Baylor coming into today was the hitters that surround Govan, they had to step up, and they've been doing that, you know, hot. Leading off with the home run. Losses with the home run. Popped up again. Rowe has it in front of the Baylor dugout, and Govan is frustrated. Two away. Only a Binford. She'll try to keep the inning going with two outs and an RBI single, her last plate appearance in the fifth inning. It was Binford's base knock that put Baylor in front. Two strikes. Boy, this place in the bottom of the seventh is going to come unglued as Louisiana will be down to its final three outs. <laughs> Sam Rowe to lead it off in the bottom of the seventh. Cajun fans coming to their feet. Louisiana has six come from behind wins since April the 23rd. Six. In less than a month. They only have one win, though, the entire season when trailing after six innings. That came back on March 16th against South Alabama in a Sunbelt Conference game. Can they do it here? They're down just one, and they've got the meat of their order. Sam Rowe, Victoria Valdez, and Alexa Langliers, three, four, and five scheduled to hit. What a game this has been. After we had two blowouts in the first two meetings between Baylor and Louisiana. Baylor won 8-0 yesterday. Louisiana worked them to the tune of 13-0 earlier this afternoon, forcing this game. And now here comes the crowd in full throat. Ground ball. Pylon throws across. One out on one pitch for Riley Crandall. Winner in the Super Regionals. Headed to Gainesville next year to take on, next week I should say, to take on the Gators. Valdez takes a strike. Victoria, fourth plate appearance, has an RBI sack fly to her credit today. This is a player who can tie it up with one swing. That 
gets off the knob of the bat. It's a foul ball, and Valdez knew it. It's amazing. It's amazing how many times she has been either hit or a situation like this where her bat gets in that ball's path. Yeah, well, you just notice her first approach. She turns her hips and her hands at the same time, and the ball's coming. She just runs into it. Riley Crandall, six and a third. Just one earned run allowed. She has yet to strike out a hitter today. She has scattered nine hits about. Belt champs for the fifth straight year trying to get on to the Super Regionals for the second straight season. Strikeout. Crandall pumping her fist. Two down. I mean, the timing that you said that her first K of the day, I mean, just this changeup that falls off the table and no better timing to throw this pitch. And now Louisiana down to its last out, possibly for the season. But what a player to have up there in a clutch situation, Alexa Langleers. She's been on twice in this game. Next pitch for Crandall will be 100 on the day. 100 in the game, not the day, because we saw her earlier, game one. And she has been Workmanlike. Strike on the outside corner. That's high, two and one. Louisiana can get Lang Lears on. You've got Ellistad on deck, and Ellistad has been so good today. Has driven in seven runs. Crandall rocks back. Here comes the 2 1 pitch. Two and two. Baylor one pitch away, perhaps, from their first Super Regional since 2017. It's also the last time they went to the Women's College World Series. That's low. What a game this has been. Pop back. Alexa Lang Lears, nine home runs on the year. Again, the three two from Crandall. That's well foul. Will it stay in play? No. Hot gave it a try. What a battle here. And what a great at bat. I mean, just Langler's just competing, fighting Crandall as well. I mean, you can just feel how much this means to both teams. Pitch number eight. <laughs> Missed it. Here comes Ellistad with the tying run at first. Oh. 
Brooke Ellistad. The transfer from St. Thomas in St. Paul. Came down south for moments just like this. Sunbelt Conference Newcomer of the Year. And Deja Williams is going to come in to pinch run. Ellistad was uh, one player show in that first game against Baylor today. Yeah, she's been clutch at the plate. And again, that was the moment where she just snubbed. Baylor took all their energy and just a big, huge moment for her. That was the grand slam. She had six RBIs in game one, has one in this game. And they need her to come through now, down to their last out. Crandall misses low. Great speed at first base now in Williams. Representing the tying run. Ellistad could walk it off with one swing. Nine homers, 54 runs batted in for Ellistad. One and two. And that Baylor bench trying to help Will Riley Crandall, the sophomore from New Mexico, across the finish line here. The one two pitch. Could end the game. Binford to first. Baylor is going to the Super Regionals. Seventh time that the Baylor Bears are headed to the Supers under Glenn Moore. And Louisiana sees its season come to an end after a 44-win campaign here in 2024. Glenn Moore joins us now, the Baylor head coach. Congratulations, Glenn. You're headed back to the Supers. Initially, what is your takeaway from what has been a long, exciting day? Well, I just uh, have to hats off to Louisiana. Um, what a bunch of fighters to, to stay up late last night, work their way back, and then put it on us in the first game. And then um, it's down to the, the wire in that game. Just uh, very proud of our team. But uh, a huge shout out to their, their bunch. They've got a great bunch. And yeah. Great, great bunch of warriors over there. Yes, Coach. Just talk about what this means to your Baylor program, going on the Supers, punching that ticket. Uh, well, we've been working our way back to this point. You know, we've been here a few times, but it's uh, the last few years we've kind of dropped the ball a few times. So hard to get back over that hump, uh, hard to get the respect. We've played a strength of schedule that uh, through much of the year was ranked number one, and I think we're probably number five, I think, right now are, are going into this regional. And uh, it's hard to tell you kids that that's going to eventually pay off, but uh, days like today you see it pay off. So I'm really proud of them. You had a lot of stars throughout the weekend, uh, Govan, of course, but Riley Crandall getting the start in this deciding game seven of the regional, and she locked down Louisiana for the most part. Yeah, and they were, man, they were on fire game one day, and uh, just watching that could intimidate you, and, and she went out there and uh, just really competed well, and that was a team that did not want to go home. Uh, you know, we didn't either, so it was a great ball game. Uh, but Riley, it was uh, she's on her game, and you had to be to, to beat that lineup. And you know, after Taylor Strange throw at home plate was unbelievable too. Probably, oh. probably saved the game right there. No doubt. I mean, she took two runs off the board for opponents this weekend. I mean, yeah. she was a star from <laughs> from game one. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Well, Glenn, good luck in Gainesville. We appreciate your time all weekend. Congratulations to your Baylor Bears. Thank you, guys.